Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. During fittings, customers always ask me how many wedges should I play in my bag and how do I gap those wedges? My suggestion is to have a four to six degree gap between each wedge, which is usually about a 10 to 15 yard gap. But for players that hit the ball a little bit further or really wanna fine tune their wedge game, they need to learn how to essentially gap those wedges a little bit better. Let's face it, your wedges are your scoring clubs. The closer you can hit the ball on the green, the shorter those putts are gonna be and the more birdies you're gonna make. So your wedges are very, very important to your game. Because I hit the ball further, I need to have four wedges in my bag. I have played around with having three wedges in the past, um, but essentially I went back to four, four wedges because the percentage of shots that I hit with that one longer club that I got in my bag really turned into be hitting more wedges in the past and I will always say your wedges are your scoring clubs, they are more important. If you don't hit the ball as far, you probably don't need to have four wedges in your bag. Um, the wedge I usually suggest to maybe get rid of if you don't want to have four wedges is probably your 60 degree wedge, especially if your short game is a little suspect. Getting the ball rolling on the green as opposed to flying a wedge all the way to the flag and generating fancy spin or anything like that, it can definitely affect your uh, scoring. Let's just say those shots are really fantastic to hit, but the odds of you pulling that shot off versus a pitch and run or something's gonna land on the green and roll up to the green is gonna be much, much better. Um, if you wanna hit the ball a little higher, you can always just open up that club face with that 56 degree or your, or your sandwich of your choice. Um, but if you really need to hit the ball shorter, I highly suggest creating different wedges with each, different yardages with each wedge. Um, I know the exact carry distance with each one of my four wedges. I spend probably 50% of the time practicing my wedge game out on, when, I, when I'm practicing. Um, really, really important part to focus on. A lot of people like just go to the range and hit golf balls. A lot of the time I'm, fi I'm fine tuning those, those yardages. I wanna make sure my yardages are exactly perfect every single time. Um, each wedge I have in my bag has about three yard different yardages. So I generate, essentially, I have a nine o'clock swing. Nine o'clock swing, would look like if I would take my backswing back with these right here. Imagine on the clock that would be nine o'clock. I also have a 10.30 swing. 10.30 would be essentially right there. I also have a full swing. A full swing would be all the way fully turned. Now I don't hit that shot very often. It's probably maybe 1% of my wedges are hit with a full swing. Reason is because I want to be able to control that golf ball. If I generate a lot of spin, hit that ball a lot higher into the wind. The ball then is really, really unpredictable and it's really, really hard to control. Um, so with my 60 degree wedge, my nine o'clock swing, so my 60 degree, my nine o'clock swing right here, if I take it back here, I know when I turn through that that ball is going to carry exactly 70 yards. My 1030 swing, my 1030 swing would go all the way back to here, all the way through. I know that is going to carry 80 yards. And then my full swing, which I don't hit too often, but if I do need to hit it, maybe I need to get the ball up really high really quickly or generate a lot of spin. My full swing I know is going to carry 90 yards with my 60 degree wedge. So that's my 60 degree wedge. I also have the exact same formula with my 56 degree wedge, my 52 degree wedge, and my pitching wedge. My 56 degree, nine o'clock swing carries 90 yards. 10.30 swing carries 100 yards. Full swing carries 110 yards. 52 carries 110 for my nine o'clock swing, 120 for my 10.30 swing, and 130 yards for my full swing. And then pitching wedge carries 120 for my nine o'clock swing, 130 yards for my uh, 10.30 swing, and then it will carry 140 yards on my full swing. What's really interesting to note is my full swing with the wedge, say for example, my 60 degree wedge full swing carries 90 yards, is the exact same distance as my nine o'clock swing with the next lower lofted club. So essentially my 56 now, nine o'clock swing carries the exact same yardage as my full swing with my 60 degree. I would much prefer hitting that nine o'clock swing than the full swing for the exact same reason I mentioned before, I can control the golf ball a little bit easier with the nine o'clock golf swing than the 10.30 swing.
I hope this information on wedge gapping helps you out a lot. I recommend to learn two to three yardages with each wedge. Um, they're your scoring clubs. I have no doubt that you will score a lot better if you really focus on your wedge game.